Welcome to the Stacked Supplement Podcast, the premier source for supplement news and reviews. We are back with another Stack Supplement Podcast interview, and today we have, uh, I always say this every time, but every guest is a special guest, and uh, this time around, <laughs> we have uh, Jim uh, McMahon, I believe, uh, from PVL, a uh, big, big Canadian company uh, who's also behind Mutant. Uh, welcome to the show. Shane, thanks for having me. And uh, you know, we should have done this a few times before now, but I think this is uh, the first of a few. And I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to this. This should be fun. Yeah. So you obviously, as I mentioned, uh, the man behind uh, Mutant, uh, PVL, two very prominent brands uh, out of Canada. Um, I would say Mutant's obviously a little more known, or at least I think in, in the US, but PVL. I remember when you guys introduced me to PVL, it's like two years ago, maybe three years ago. Yeah. And I think it was with ISO Gold. And I just remember, okay, cool. I'll look it up, see what the brand's about. And it was fucking everywhere. I was like, How? <laughs> it just surprised me because, and then it showed up internationally and, and it's it's not even just in Canada. It's, it kills it in Canada, um, specifically the ISO Gold when you guys revamped it. And I was just... Uh, surprise so how long kind of has pvl been around it's uh well it's it's the original uh name of the whole company here too like um gotta go back a little bit further uh but uh, the whole company started 25 years ago in 1996 so we're this quiet little unknown entity uh and we've done a billion dollars oh shit uh, of sales since we started. So yeah, oh shit, I, I pinch myself every day, Shem. You remember, I'm a gym rat. I started out as a consumer of these products. Uh, I was a, a, a well-placed, in the third place, uh, many times, uh, many powerlifting meets. And um, I discovered supplements through a lot of injuries and things like that. And uh, by the time uh, my mid-20s had come around, I, I was done being a bouncer. And, in, the, in a nightclub here and there. I was done doing security. Right? I was just done a whole bunch of things. And I got into the industry. And then you work your way through parts of this industry. And I was uh, driving all around Western Canada, kind of, um, you know, working for somebody else. And and lo and behold, it turns out I knew a thing or two about uh, these things from my own personal use uh, when we started the company. And it was called PVL on day one. And so before there was Mutant, there was PVL. Yeah. Okay, so the uh, so it, it's been in Canada for what sounds like a couple of decades now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, careful! Don't make me sound that old. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so it has it has the international expansion kind of been more recent? Because I've seen it pop up in a couple of other countries. Is that a more recent thing, or is that kind of been? Uh, it, listen, it's always been there. Like we, we had some, uh, like in Australia a, a while, many years ago, uh, Australia really took to PVL for a, a long yeah. time there as well. And, and we've, we've always had it going on, but international for us uh, as, a, as an overall company, of course, Mutant, yes. uh, yeah. Mutant just took off. It just went boom. Uh, and, and so it, it overshadowed its big brother. Like if you actually look at, the 2005 version of the mutant mass bag yes it's big and shiny and red and it was crazy i mean we we're putting 15 pounds in a bag whoever thought of doing that and but there's a pvl logo on the very first bags oh wow, really? it, it was pvl mutant mass in 2005 <laughs> oh yeah there's there's going to be a throwback thursday or a flashback friday instagram post coming up on this and Everybody, get to that's, that's you look be, me up at, uh, at Mutant CEO, and you'll you'll see the post. I that's got to be a collector's item, uh, no doubt. Well, we got a lot. We got a lot of collect, collectors' items around here. Oh wow, that would be cool. That yeah, twenty five years of stuff around here. It kind of reminds me of uh, I remember the first uh, Jacked USP lab. They told me that it was originally called Jacked, no three with an E, yeah. and uh, their first run was without the three. And I was like, oh man, that would have been like a a collector's item to have with totally it. yeah oh yeah <laughs> I, there, there, I there's there's so many things i wish we had kept uh yeah, like we, we, we look back at it and go oh man i wish i still had that from like yeah. 10 years ago 15 years ago or stuff like that yeah but, PV uh, yeah, but pvl is uh is just got bypassed by by mutant and it's not that like we forgot about pvl we're still you know 
cranking away up here in Canada with, with that uh, brand and doing well. And it's and now, um, you know, we've been able to to hire some more uh, salespeople that we know in the industry. Um, that's one of the, the things we've been able to accomplish during COVID. Um, we we nicely were able uh, to find ourselves in a position after a small dip, which I thought was yeah. pretty bad, obviously. Um, when things started to come back to life, we just started hiring people. And we thought this was the opportunity we needed uh, to expand a, a little bit further. So uh, instead of playing it safe, I decided to risk everything and go all in again. So uh, that's what we did. Because it's the brand has kind of come on quite strongly, I felt, since that ISO Gold rebrand, because it was a big shift, at least yeah. to me, to because previously the brand, as you say, it it was two decades old, but it kind of still had that that oldish look. And then that's why I kind of feel like it has this now new modern feel because that rebrand's really bought it up and it's I guess reinvigorated it, at least visually. And uh, you didn't just rebrand ISO Gold, you had a few things in the mix and you've done similar to other supplements in the line. What was the, the driving force? Because the rebrand wasn't last year, I think it was the year before. I, I yeah, get it was mixed two up. years ago. Yeah. yeah, I get mixed up. <laughs> I forget, I forget no, nobody, nobody knows what happened in the last 15 months anyways. <laughs> you know, it's, what is it? It's still like what, March, you know, 522nd yeah. of 2020 still. I, I, I always think that was <laughs> last year. I was like, no, 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 no. We didn't do anything for the last, last year. Doesn't count. Last year just doesn't count, man. <laughs> but yeah, you did the the rebrand, and that was kind of before, long before COVID. And what was the yeah. what was really the, the I guess the the goal behind it outside of the the look like because it's been around for a while. What kind of yeah. made you think like you know what now's the time? Let's 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 uh, refresh. Well, first of all, we certainly didn't want to refresh it just to have a project to do yeah. like we don't we joke right on, inside the building area you know nobody wants to invent new coke you know that didn't go too well for coca-cola when they did new coke so you <laughs> never want to you never want to just do a project for the sake of oh let's do something new uh but the the labels were looking a little old and so something had to be done and we have I, I, authentically speaking uh, when you come visit here so uh, the marketing team uh, the marketing part of the team they're they're on they got their whole own floor they're downstairs and, and they've got about five thousand square feet of just pure marketing bliss in heaven and we just walk by we don't even know what's going on in there half the time they got their own coffee station i'm sure if i put a ping pong table in there they'd be thrilled anyways i walked by one day and uh, one of the artists they said jim come over here we want to show you this this idea for for iso gold and it was such a radical departure from what it, it was, used to yeah. be um, you know, looked like a 19, the old one looked like a blue version of a 1984 uh, Star Wars-esque kind of, like it was old. Um, so didn't look good. But I just let the art team do what they do. And they blew me away. And they said, look at this black label with the explosion, explosion of flavor on it, which we'd never seen anybody really quite do it that way. And we were like, that is freaking cool. And in the art department, we got, I think at the time we had like seven uh, artists in, in there, in that one room at least, we're doing all the graphic work. Seven out of seven of them loved the label. And they're all target audience people, they're, and, you know, a mix of male and female. And I'm just like, what do you guys think? And, you know, and one by one, people just kept coming by and said, this is awesome, this is awesome, this is awesome. And then I uh, secretly unveiled it uh, to a select group of uh, uh retailers and distributors uh, at the Olympia in Vegas uh, under cloak and dagger. And they, you know, some people didn't really get it at, at first, but uh, most of them, I say over 85% of them just went, wow. And so when we got that wow from that many people, we knew we were onto something. That was 2019, and, right? Correct. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was where I saw it. I was, I was in that select group, I believe. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> you, you, you got, you got brought up to the secret meeting room, if I recall correctly. Yeah, but the thing was, is again, that was when I was first <laughs> introduced to PVL. So I didn't really know what the previous one looked like, but I still kind of was saw it. And I was like, this, this is very nice. Why it, yeah, it you, wasn't so, uh, you guys showed me and I was like, oh, okay. That's a huge fucking difference. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were pretty proud. You, you probably hit the secret meeting room probably when there's two or three other meetings going on in that yes, room. Was, like, yep. like did we, I think at times we've had like 30 or 40 people in that one room. I'm like, I can't even hear myself think. <laughs> yep. 
I've, the, yeah. but to be honest that's when you got when you get those bigger companies that kind of tends to happen like i've been in some of those and they'll say like oh that's that's kind of how i met sportica he was in the room at the same time and i knew who sportica <laughs> was but i didn't know anyone there and he knew who stacked was and we were kind of listening into each other's meetings he's like oh shit you're sportica you're stacked yeah that happens but um yeah it was a it, it was a big departure i felt and i kind of like i said i was introduced to the brand at that time and the thing was is that being introduced to pvl at that time it was a uh you know the it, it definitely appealed to me which i think was the goal right out of the gate to appeal to a new audience but also appeal yeah. to the older audience that you guys have built for yeah 20 years so it was yeah. well yeah we, we we also i mean aside from a pretty label let, let's be clear here you know oh yeah if, if if somebody's got a nice label that's great but let's make sure there's some horsepower in the engine here and so we also have gone on a curiosity quest. And I think that's one of our call signs that we're, we're curious. Like, I, I like figuring stuff out. Like, how do you take boring old way isolate? Yeah. Okay, you can add a flavor to it. Whoop, whoop de doo Basil. I don't care which. <laughs> I don't care if you got a trademark flavor arrangement with Flintstone Tutti Fruity Pebbles. I'm good with that. Uh, you know, you got something with, with uh an ice cream brand. I love that too. Like I tried to do that too. Like, don't forget, I, I also own Way Gourmet. Way Gourmet blew up to over 24 flavors back in its heyday, way back when we had root beer flow, we had stuff like that, like you wouldn't believe. So aside from taking away isolate and, oh, okay, I can drench it in flavor, whoop de do. Um, what else are you gonna do? And so people have added enzymes to it and, and, and other things. And uh, we had a, a nice, uh, Maybe it's divine intervention, I don't know. But a really good, trusted raw material supplier friend of mine uh, had a really great relationship uh, with this major, major, major probiotic company. And they hooked us up with this, uh, what we've now called it the athlete's probiotic, but people can look it up. We, you know, it's called DE 111. Yeah. It's a super shelf stable probiotic. And we're like, okay. And so we went on a curiosity quest. And I remember I, I flew out to Eastern Canada. I sat down with one of the top guys uh, from one of the top retail chains from Popeyes in Canada. And we sat down there and we asked some questions. So what do you think about adding enzymes? And they're, you know, they're like, hey, you know. And then that conversation, probably a couple dozen other ones, almost everybody came back saying, you know what would be cool is if somebody actually had a super probiotic that actually worked as the, your better your gut health, the better you can uh, absorb nutrients as well. And so it just made common sense. It wasn't super exciting. It's not yeah. you know u- uber glamorous. And we're certainly not the first ones who have done it. I remember when Gaspari had the Ganeden uh, uh, probiotic in there, uh, the BC30, I think it was called, or something yeah, like that. 31, yeah. yeah, so you know we're not first to do it but this de111 was just unique and we we're like man this is kind of cool so we got to do two things at once we got to redo the label yes we upgraded the flavor i guess i should mention that too but adding in the full and i emphasize that a full dose of probiotics and what a dose is is at least 1 billion live active cultures and that's a dose i, I always laugh when i see somebody so oh, yeah we got probiotics in our product and i go what do you got in there you know Oh, we got a hundred million. Sounds like a lot. Sorry, but that's going to do SFA for your gut health. Or they, or they don't say what's in it and just put it at the bottom of the label. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. Uh, but you, you, at least on this one, we were like, okay, we're going to go balls to the wall on this. And so um, didn't cost nothing, but it also didn't cost us everything to put it in there. And so we were able to take, you know, stuffy old ISO gold brand from PVL put a pre-dress on it, get nice flavors in it, and then boom, hammer it home with that DE-111. And uh, it just worked, and people love it, and can't beat it. That's the way I look at it. I do. I got I do. It. To, to, to me, buy, sorry, to Shane, to me, buy, buying something that's got an add-on, like a, like a probiotic, why would you buy yeah, yeah. virtually anything else? I go apples to apples, I'm going to buy the one that's got the extra probiotics every time. These days, I think the... You, you do kind of not necessarily have to, but it is much nicer when you see that stuff. Uh, like we've written stories about rebrands before, but it makes things a whole lot more exciting when you can tie in uh, additional probiotics, bit of flavor, <clears throat> uh, but you know, you can still keep it familiar to fans of ISO gold. Um, 
So I did, I, I quite liked how you added that little thing in. So it wasn't just a, a fancy new look. And it was kind of the start of the PVL rebrand because Isogold led the way. Then you kind of did it to a few other supplements. Um, all yeah. leading up to what I would say, or what was hyped and, and what I would say might be because PVL wasn't really, I wasn't sure, but has it hasn't been on the pre-workout market before, has it? No comment. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so, Okay, so, so dominate. No, it really wasn't before in anything big. So okay. kind, of, kind of this was, yeah, because I remember uh, you guys were saying that it, it, it's really the first attempt at pre-workout and I didn't ask anything more, but I assumed that there might have been like other things here and there that wasn't oh, necessarily yeah. like a pre-workout, but this was kind of made very uh, clear that this was your first real go or real attempt or real entry into the pre-workout market, which just hit the uh, hit the industry was a couple last week, week before. And um, yep. like you guys said, it was hyped as the biggest launch from PVL to date, which makes sense. It's the pre-workout category, I would say, right up there with Protein Powder these days. And, and you guys hit it pretty hard. Um, but before we get into that, I'd like to like... I know a lot of people always wonder about the Canadian market because it is obviously very, very different from the US. Do you mind just giving as brief of an overview, because I know it can go a lot more than brief, but as brief of an overview as to what it takes to the, the steps you have to go through as a big brand, especially yeah. to launch an entirely new supplement, not like uh, piece it together, but to just to go from your development to launch and how long you guys have kind of been doing that for dominate which i imagine has been a while <laughs> it's been a while uh yeah so i'll answer both uh, your main questions or but for, let me clarify 25 years we've made a shitload of pre-workout powders so i i, I want to reassure everybody yeah. we're not rookies at doing this yeah. and authentic and authentically speaking you know this, Shane, and I got—I got to admit, uh, probably a lot of people don't know this. We used to man manufacture other brands, one in particular that's quite well known around the world. We used to manufacture Muscle Farm way back in the day. So, oh, wow. you got to remember, we were making a salt for Muscle Farm back in 2009 and, and 2010. Huh. That's a—that's a fact, you know. So it's there. Uh, PVL obviously has had its own pre-workouts in its past and Mutant of course has had pre work and, and we manufacture for other brands as well. Like our facility up here is a quarter million square feet when you add it all, all up over three buildings. So I, I just want people to feel reassured that, you know, who we are and what we're doing. And so we can joke about PVL's biggest pre-workout yeah. launch. They, that is a fact. But it's by but far we, not the... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not our first rodeo. Like <laughs> we we've been here, done that a few times. So developing uh, the Dominate uh, product, and that's what we call it, PVL Dominate, and it's spelled with an eight. That's uh, because it's got eight grams of citrulline malate, and we and we didn't pick eight grams out of, the, out of the thin air. You know, we just we went after the latest greatest study and said, listen, okay, there's a legit study, eight grams. And we're going to start there, and uh, so we've got eight featured ingredients, and and there's also eight. Um, uh, added ingredients. So there's 16 active ingredients in total. And um, I think you and I should also disclose uh, our conversation that you and I had with Scott Welch uh, with, uh, from Muscle Insider when the three of us were in Vegas. And you remember um, we were sitting there and I was joking a little bit with you and, and, and you said, you know, Jim, please, please don't tell me you're launching a pre-workout. You know, please, please, please don't tell me you're launch just don't tell me it's another pre-workout, okay? I don't think, so I couldn't wait to call you a few months uh, <laughs> back here and go, Shane, guess what we're coming out with? And you're like, uh, here we go. <laughs> but there, there's so much purpose in what we built here. And I think that's why a lot of consumers and retailers and distributors have stayed with us for as long as they have, because they, they know me. They, they know I have a personal stake in everything we do here and that I have a, a very strong sense of purpose uh, when it comes to what we do. So there is a reason why we did not have a pre-workout for a long time. And in fact, I just emailed uh, one of Canada's top stores. We're joking about dominating. Said, well, we're, we're glad you did wait. We're in, we're darn glad to see what you actually did come up with because it doesn't look like everything else out there. Yeah. 
And I go, great. We don't want to be like everything else, not because we, we want to be different. Everybody wants to be different and unique, but you know, I deal with athletes. I deal with bodybuilders. I used to be a power lifter myself. Uh, a lot of the pre-workouts that I see out there, and again, I'm not here to crap on, on other brands and that's not what I want to do here. But I do want to brag about my product, but one thing I want to brag about it is its focus is actually on performance yeah. and strength. We didn't go super duper stim junkie. Uh, and, you know, there's good shots of caffeine in here, but we put in the l to balance it out as well. And I could go off on a whole show just about stims because Christ, you know, I've, I've dealt with every stim there is known to mankind. I come from Stimville. I come from <laughs> F Canada. We still got ephedrine. You want ephedrine? We got the ultimate stim still. Everything else since ephedrine, I ain't even trying to be ephedrine. Come on, let's be honest. So I can still put ephedrine in a supplement in Canada. You can still walk to the drugstore and buy your ephedrine. It's not like it's banned and you can't go get it. So I, I don't want to crap on other uh, pre-workouts that have gone stim crazy. Uh, but I go, as an athlete, how much stim do you really need? And why would you want to be overstimmed all the time to where you're, you're, anx you're anxious or, or your heart's beating out of your chest or you can't get to sleep at night? And stims, I'm sorry, they don't really do a lot for strength. Yeah. You know, they do a lot for reaction time, no question, right? And if you want more reps with the same old weight you've been lifting, well, hey, stims, great thing to do, no question. And they sell well, no problem there either. But I got to deal with like Olympic gold medalists. I got to deal with like, you know, guys uh, in New Zealand rugby. I got to deal with NHL hockey players as well. And, and plus I still deal, you know, big Ron, uh, uh, you know, rep 300, uh, his, his Instagram handle. So we're still dealing with 300 pound bodybuilders too. And so I know there's differing opinions on what it should be in a pre-workout. I'm just saying, how much stim do you really need if the goal is to build muscle? The goal yeah. is to lift a heavier weight, not to do more reps per se. So we wanted to focus on what we put in here. There's 26 grams per scoop for God's sakes. Yeah. <laughs> and no I'm carbs. Not... I know a lot of people do the heavy ones, but they do the heavy scoops and sometimes they'll throw in like 10 grams of this at carbs and it just really all BCAAs and they'll say 40 gram serving. And I'm like, well, but to be honest, to your point, I actually noticed that a lot with Canadian companies is that they don't do that high stim, exotic stim take. Like it's, it's, I think a lot of people, even though Canada is obviously right next door to the US, the markets are, are quite different. Like if you walk into a mainstream store in, in Canada, uh, it, it's not as, I would say, fierce as like you know, 400 milligrams of caffeine, 500, 600, this exotic stim, this kind of grace. Like it's, it, it does seem to be more that, balance of performance just as much as it is stim kind of like the international market you get that a bit but i i have to imagine that's got something to do with i've always thought it had a lot to do with the process in which it takes to get a product to market in canada because well, there is yeah yeah and and what you're alluding to is uh up here in canada um we have a, a regulatory regime for the dietary supplements called uh, natural health product directorate um, so it's the NHPD or NNHP, there's two ends in there somewhere. And so to make a dietary supplement, like a pre-workout, a BCA formula, uh, anything like that, a non-food, if you will, you have to go through that process. And there's, <laughs> there's a lot of regulatory hassle in that process. And it, and it can take you up to two years uh, to get your product licensed in Canada. So it's not too much different than the TGA in Australia, as, a, as another example. Yeah. But the TGA is way too strict. I think, that off the record, I think they've lost their freaking minds. Well, that's why uh, everyone's kind of kind of always gone the powder route rather than the capsule. Uh, well, yeah, and, and you and you know, I I was in Australia and New Zealand uh, right before COVID. Uh, so I, you know, I was down there in November 2020. And I remember we were going around and talking with some of the Australian stores, and we saw yeah. what was going on, and we're like. Oh crap! Here we go. Yeah. You know this. This is not good. Like I'm sorry. Why do you need a prescription to even get your BCAs? And yeah, so, uh... <laughs> so the so the Canadian uh, way of doing that is dangerously close to Australia's TGA. But thank goodness we're not there 
at that depth. But that's the biggest difference. Whereas in the United States, and again, we do sell a lot in the States, not as much as I would like. Uh, we're working on that. Uh, but in the United States, a lot of people think it is an absolute free for all. Uh, but actually, the regulations are there. In the United States, regu there are regulations on what you can and can't do when it comes to certain ingredients. Uh, but there's just not enough enforcement uh, in the United States. So you're going to have more of a free for all anyways. And it's catch me if you can uh, down there. I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of crazy stories down there. And, and uh, last time I was in the States and I love going down there and I, I love, I, I love all the, the distributors and retailers we do. We already work with there, but yeah, I saw a lot of free workouts in some of the stores and I'm like, <laughs> Holy hell. I mean, again, how much stim do you need? Uh, it's like, Oh, you got 600 milligrams of caffeine. You got a hundred milligrams of dynamine. You got 50 milligrams of hordenine, 50 milligrams of beta P a hundred milligrams of hygienamine. Oh, oh, let's, and let's throw in some yohimbine while we're at it too. Oh, and, and then, Oh, what's that other thing that just got banned? DMA. Oh, let's throw some of that in there, even though this is not supposed to be in there. Oh, and two amino isoheptane or however you pronounce that ingredient. I'm like, Whoa, this isn't a supplement anymore. This is crack. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I, I'm a fan of the, the balanced stuff. Like I, I find things when they're too heavy stint, they limit you. Like you say, they, you're about to do 10 reps, you better do 20 reps, you better do, but like <laughs> by the time you go to do another set, your heart and you're still trying to catch up on like your oxygen and your breath and you're just puffing and you're not able to, you know, do five reps at a better weight, then do another set at the, at, at a better weight. And then you're not able to just, push the actual performance it's more of yeah. just driving you through and i like those ones that have that balance and i mean don't get me wrong i like the high stim but I, you know i it, i need to be able to perform like i measure each week if i'm not doing what i did last week or better i'm disappointed and, and well, that's, it, just, it, that's just about exactly line. well wh why else would any of us go to the gym is we're trying to improve we're trying to progress now i'm not saying everybody wants or needs to be a bodybuilder of course not i mean crossfit whatever hey whatever your game is what's your game i remember i deal with athletes in, in virtually every sport you can imagine so we're used to that what i do see though is this over preponderance of pre-workouts that went and still go so deep into the stim game and they and we're kind of leaving the performance part of it behind and and i'm uh, just a cautionary tale to to consumers, I go, listen, you're not actually going to increase your overall performance. You're especially not going to be able to lift a heavier dumbbell during your dumbbell curls. You're not going to increase your bench press weight if all you're doing is taking a pre-workout that's just so loaded on stim. Get some bloody proven performance enhancing ingredients that actually help you lift mm. more bloody weight and that's it at the same time i do know there are a few people who probably you could ask and if you said to them would you like to <laughs> would you like to lift more or would you just like to lift a lot and feel fucking good i can guarantee yeah. you a lot of them are going to be like i just want to look good and feel great and oh, i yeah. and, and i think there's and that's a lot of i imagine that's a big market and that's probably why high stems are doing so well because i guess the casual lift is like look i need to do 10 reps at a good weight tie myself out, recover, and I'll grow. And I guess it's a, there's a market, there's a supplement and there's a market for everything. And, but oh, I, totally. I, I am more on the performance side. I come from a sort of more performance athletic background. So I've always been like, look, if it's not going to up my game, I don't really want to spend 50 bucks a month on it. So it's a, yeah. and, and, and I sometimes I do try to remind myself that even if I get a lot of my products for free, I still buy a lot just to remind me that like, look, $50 for one product for a month, that's not a small amount of money. And no. when you're doing a stack of five, look at two couple hundred bucks. That is a good amount of money per month. Uh, it's more than your power bill. It's more than your water bill. It's the yeah. utilities. It's you, I think it's good to be reminded that you know, people are investing this kind of money in this stuff. And it's, um, it's uh yeah the market's definitely changed but i i did i did i did dig the eight grams of pure citrulline i know a lot of companies were uh 
moving more towards that six to eight. You guys went for the far eight. I know BSN is just doing the same thing uh, soon, I believe. Right. And it's uh, it's because it, it's obviously not a it's not a sort of small amount. It's a pretty big amount. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you're definitely gonna feel it. I mean, I I take half a scoop. I don't even take the full scoop because I go, okay, how much it's how, how much performance enhancement do I need? Like, I'm not trying to get on a stage. I'm not trying to be a yeah. power lifter anymore. Um, but I still go half a scoop, and I'm just freaking zipping around the gym. I'm like, all right, let's add some more weight. All right, let's do some supersets. All right, let's finish off. Give me some four reps. All right, woo. You know it. <laughs> If, yeah. if you if you use the right stuff and, and, you, and you use enough of it, well, you're going to get a result. And so there, there's also the the, the argument uh, about diminishing returns uh, if you use too much of anything excessively. So we, we could be talking about stims. We could be talking about alcohol. We could be talking about any, almost any uh, drug yeah. you want to talk about. So the question then becomes as well, why would you knowingly overdo it on, on, on stims to the point where you can't even feel 400 or 600 yep. milligrams of caffeine helping you anymore. Like, I don't think that's a good place to be driving traffic to. It is, so, it is, it is. A, I think this, the, the, the high stem products have kind of bought that on. Obviously when there's more out there, more to try, people are going to want to try and get better. And it, oh, I think, yeah. it, I think it's human nature to think like, look, 300 milligrams does this. So 600 is going to do this and then 900 this and then oh, one. totally. Yeah. So I, I can, I can understand it, especially if you're not like, if you're first year into supplements, like it's, it is, it is weird to think that like, yeah, when you start five grams of creatine, it's like, Oh shit, what if I did 10? Like you'd, I understand <laughs> the, the mindset and the approach, but I guess that's where the education part comes in. And that's where you guess the, the trusting of the brand. It's like, look, we're going to give you 30 servings. You need to use these 30 servings for 30 days. Don't do fucking 15 you know it's uh well, exactly well exactly and and again we position all of our products uh in a certain way because i'm a consumer of them too like we don't make anything that we wouldn't use ourselves plain and simple like people have asked me hey why don't you make this i won't name the category because i don't want to offend you know any of your <laughs> customers and friends um or my competitors uh but you know there's a few product categories i won't bother with because i go ah yeah no that's uh just nothing I want to be. I don't mean they're illegal. I just go, yeah, I'm really not seeing enough data that yeah. says that that herb's going to give me that pharmacological type effect. You know, s- some do to a certain degree. Like, yeah, I sell a test booster in Mutant. Am I telling you it's going to work like steroids? No. Okay. It's just plain and simple. It won't. But I'm also not going to do certain things where I'm going to tell you something work, works like insulin and, I, and there's not yeah. enough data that it does yet. I mean, I'm open, you know, but there, there's a lot of good things out there, but I'd rather help people again. And I, and I get to say these things because I do have 25 to 30 years of experience doing this. I was about to so, say that. Yeah. So it's not like me. I'm trying to be a hype monster or anything like that. I go, well, no, I've seen what, what stands the test of time, what people gravitate towards, uh, especially right now, times are tough. Eating is, is hard enough right now. And we all know you got to eat. Like, when, hey, I'll name drop right now. When we were working with Rich Piana before, you know, he went on and did his 5% nutrition, Rich talked about, you got to eat. You know, no matter what else you're doing, you still got to yeah. freaking eat. And no truer words were ever spoken than that. And so myself and Ron and all the guys here, we all say the same thing. We know that this is the life you live. You, money, money's going to be tight for a lot of people. So I, I try to make sure people understand you got to prioritize your supplement purchase if you're buying supplements, but prioritize what you need to plug the gaps up in your diet with first. So if it's protein, you're not getting enough protein in your diet. Well, then, hey, put your money onto a protein powder, plain and simple. All right, what's next? You still got money left over and you got some other gaps. All right, well, let's let's accelerate recovery next. That's the next thing to look at, I think. And then if you want the pre-workout, well, that's, that's the next thing to look at. And so that's kind of a prioritized way of trying to help people actually that's, get real, real results. That's crazy to hear because that's exactly kind of ever since I started taking supplements before pre-workouts became popular, that was my uh, hierarchy. It was protein, uh, something for recovery, and then a multivitamin. And then it was something exotic on the end, whether it be like a test booster, fat burner, 
anything additional, but those were the priority prioritized things because at the end of the day, something that can help you, if there's something that could double your recovery, arguably that's probably yeah. going to be better than something that's going to hike you up with stims for, for, a, for a workout. So I, I've always gone that way. No question. I mean, you, you, you can go and look at any professional sport, any, any professional sport. And the number one priority, every one of those athletes and their, and their strength coaches and trainers all have is recovery. Yeah. It's not, it's not about getting you all wired up. Although, you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're very aware of, of Sudafed and ephedrine and, and things back in the day that were definitely used. Uh, but uh, recovery is still job one for the real athletes, the hardcore athletes. And that's all eating really is the proper timing of your, of your nutrient intake, you know, making sure you're taking advantage of that window of opportunity, you know, within 20 or 30 minutes after a workout, like I still talk with athletes and I said, well, what'd you have after, after the game or after your workout? Oh, you know, well, I, I, I showered up and then I hopped in the car and then, you know, I went over here and then I ordered him. So what was the time lag from when you, you know, left the yeah. rink or left the field or left the gym to when the food was going in your, in your mouth? Ah, uh, about an hour, hour and a half. I said, yeah, yeah, you kind of missed the window. That's something I learned back in the day when, because I was a swimmer for like 15 years and um, that was kind of something I learned in the last few years was that they never really put a priority on it. It was kind of like bodybuilders, no, not my bodybuilders, I guess just like your, your casual person. It's like if I lift my ass off in the gym, ah, doesn't matter what I eat, when I do it, whatever. If I lift it, I'll be able to do more next week. That was kind of why we were brought up with, say, look, eat as much carbs as you can, train hard. No, it, was, it wasn't like, make sure you eat, get eight hours sleep. None of that was really high up on the priority list. And I noticed that with a lot of sports, it's, and still to this day, like you said, it's nutrient timing, nutrition, macros, all these things play a big role. I guess until you get to that real professional level when you got money and when you got money, people are telling you, look, you need to do this. And that's <laughs> when I guess you learn like really, really, really well that, uh, cause I think Phil Heath, uh, when he did that documentary, I think it was generation I, and he was, he was saying he does the, the massages, the, the, the recovery, the, like the, the naps during the day, it was yeah. all very like important things. And this training was, it was just there. And it seemed like that was the least important thing that he did, but it was to prioritize the recovery process so that the next day he could hit it twice as hard. Well, that's, yeah, that's the, the reason why the average consumer right now buys a pre-workout is because that's what they think they need to, in order to hit it in the gym. And okay, I'm not going to disagree. And I make my living from selling supplements. There, there's the honest declaration you're going to hear. But they would actually serve themselves better if they would focus on the recovery. And because they'd be more prepped, more amped, and more ready to hit the gym yeah. the next time, anyways. And so it's kind of like a depreciating return. They, they just can't seem to get ahead of it. And that's that's one of the reasons I'm not, I'm not against stims. I don't want anybody to hear me wrong. Okay. I'm not trying to piss on uh, brands that, that, that make their money on selling stim pre-work. I'm just saying there's a rate of diminishing return and it's a bit of a vicious cycle. If your goal is actually to build up the size of your chest, the size of your bicep to make the shoulder uh, cap look a little bit better. If you want to have more of a V taper to your body, sorry, you got to build some muscle. You want to build muscle? You gotta lift heavier weights, not do more reps frenetically, and then and and not be able to fall asleep properly because you're still wired on on a super stim uh, pre workout. I, mean, uh, I, I I fall into that a lot though because I I can relate because to 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 put more effort into recovery does take more effort. Whereas a pre workout, you feel <laughs> like I don't have time to go to sleep. I got this work to do. I don't have time to get a massage. I don't have time to stretch. No, no. I'm like, look, but if I take this pre-workout, <laughs> exactly, I can at exactly. least do better than I was gonna do. I do, I do appreciate it in that sense because on those days where you're fucked and because you're tired, you don't get eight hours. You, you're just feeling like shit, and you know if you go to the gym, it's not gonna perform well. I like the pre-workouts in those cases because they yeah. elevate your game, at least to a point where 
you're going to do what you need to do or what you should be doing. But I guess if you're a professional athlete, that's, that's kind of, that's, that's the baseline. You already know that that's where you've got to, you have to be recovered. Yeah. Then it's the other stuff on top. So yeah. It, 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 yeah. If, if all your listeners and all of our friends around the world would add a little bit of uh, focus and effort into their recovery after their workout, they're going to do themselves a world of good. Mm. And they can still obviously use the pre-workup. I, they don't have to go with my personal beliefs about too much stem. I go, give me some citrulline, give me some beta alanine, you know, make sure I, I make sure I'm hydrated. You know, the amount of studies we've got on when people just don't have enough calcium in, or magnesium or sodium in their bodies during their training, you know, you know, magnesium, well, that's sending off mind muscle connection signals. Like your mind's got to talk to your muscle in order for that muscle to do its job. And so studies are shown if you're working out and you're depleted in magnesium, well, guess what? Your mind muscle connection isn't firing as, as hard as it could in calcium. That's, that's a, that's a muscle contraction stimulator. So if you're not got enough calcium in the system, well, your, your performance is going to suffer. And I always laugh when people, I, uh, some people look at the sodium content of a product. Ooh, it's a high sodium. Oh, I'm sorry, 100 milligrams of sodium ain't high, lady. Or, or dude, yeah, that, that, 100 milligrams is higher. nothing. <laughs> I've seen so much higher. Well, exactly. But, you know, 100 milligrams of, of sea salt that we put into the PVL Dominate, I go, well, you kind of need that, you know. Um, and, 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 and also not just because of hydration, but a, a lot of people forget, and maybe they didn't know sodium is actually an ergogenic aid. It's actually helps your performance. And so that's something that we, we used to, we used to do that 30 years ago. Uh, you add, add a little salt into your pre-workout uh, routine and you could actually push more weight. Uh, you know, it's just water pressures, not much different to understand than the use of creatine. In, in what you're using it for. So these things work. Uh, now, they're, they're not going to turn you into Schwarzenegger overnight when I'm saying <laughs> that, of course. But every little trick helps, right? I, I think it, I think everything you're saying pretty much, I, I, like if you'd come out with a high stem pre for P, Dominate uh, uh, and PVL, I just don't think it would have fit. So I think you've, you've, you've done even though you, you led your rebrand with the ISO gold and you did other supplements between then, it, I think Dominate has just, it, it kind of fits with everything that PVL is. Like you say, performance first, endurance first. Those, uh, the brands out there doing the high stims and hardcore stuff, I think they have their audience and they know their audience very much like Totally, you. yeah. I think that Dominate kind of fits and anyone that is a PVL fan that buys PVL on a regular basis, I, I think this would probably just going to suit them because you can you 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 get that across with the the sports teams that you back and sponsor and then that kind of leads into dominate and I think it it's pretty much a just a great entry for PVL well first entry to the yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes it's an, PVL that overnight sensational brand it's only twenty <laughs> only twenty five years young I didn't I, I didn't if you had told me it was old I might have thought early twenty ten I yeah, wouldn't have, I, know. I wouldn't have said I definitely want to sit nineties. I definitely. Well, you, you got. You got to remember. I'm just a quiet Canadian. You know, we don't like to brag too much. So yeah, I've been keeping it quiet. I've been keeping a secret for 25 <laughs> years. <laughs> There's so with dominate. I guess you're obviously not done. Far from done. Never done. I'm assuming there's more lined up because, like I said, dominate. You said the process can take up to two years. <laughs> so yeah. That's the good thing about Canadian companies, is you know that when you you, you have to be working on something already. Always. So uh, I'm excited to see what else is to come. I like, I, I do, I dig the performance endurance yeah. sports angle. So I, I think people with the pre-workout, the protein and everything in between, I think it's a, you're going to be able to rely on what you come out with. And you always check, like you said, the research you did with retailers, you made sure they supported it. You made sure it made sense to them. So I think uh, it should be exciting to see what else you got uh, coming down the pipeline. Oh yeah. Well, I'm surprised you're not asking me. I don't want to ask. I don't want to ask. You, 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 you don't want to ask because you got a whole market. I don't want Ian to. Dude, you shouldn't fucking sit there. I don't want to. I uh, you, you can ask. I told you you could ask me anything. Ask okay. Me anything. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna ask you anything, but you know. Okay. So 
obviously we've gone dominate which again was the biggest one that you've done so <laughs> far it what 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 what's next uh from pvl in terms of i guess a new product uh, or at least the next and the closest thing to to dominate that'll be that'll be coming well shane i wish i could tell you oh god but you know <laughs> these kind of things nah it's I'm looking at my whiteboard. Listen, in my off my my own office inside the building here, uh, I've got one whiteboard, and I got to remember sometimes I got to hide it when people come into my office. So I, I've got a little lazy during the COVID, I think, because we don't have visitors right now, yeah. right? So my whiteboard is just on display, and so I'm staring at it right now as you ask me that question, and I'm trying to cherry pick amongst all the things on my whiteboard. Is there anything? Is anything? Anything I can mention? Or carb supplement is is there something in that realm i just feel like that's a good fit or at least a complex amino somebody somebody explained to me the carb category i mean i've been doing supplements for a billion years it feels like i i kind of have this other little brand that some people might have heard of called mutant, mutant. And, <laughs> and we got a little product in there that some people yeah. might have heard called mutant mass yeah and so i think we know a thing or two about carbs over in mutant and mutant mass, but I, like I, I, I'm, I'm from, I'm so old, man. I know brands called Unipro, and nobody knows that brand anymore. I think, and they had, they had the original Carbo uh, powder 35 years ago. I think it was just Carboplex was the name of it, if I recall correctly. And so, you know, I, I've seen other brands come out with with the carbs, and, and you know, hey, Rich Gaspari, you know, uh, a good guy in my books. Uh, you know, we we know each other very well. I think. Uh, and, I, and I respect the hell out of the formulas that he's pumped out over the years. And, and, I, and I'm watching the carbs. And I go, wow, they must be doing well. I've just never really understood the business side, if you will, on the carbo powders. They just, I've never seen them take off, if you will. I just don't know how else to describe that. Yeah, I think it's uh, a, it, the category has kind of changed. It was carb powders like maybe mid 2010s, like 2015, people were coming out with these blends and different forms and stuff like that. But now it's taken an interesting turn where they're just like, we got a carb powder and it'll have like 50 grams of carbs, but then they're like oh, 10 grams of EAAs, uh, taurine, uh, recovery ingredients like tart cherry, and they'll be infusing yeah. what is almost maybe 2010 post-workout, then 2015 carb, and then, you know, the full spectrum EAA approach all on the one supplement. And I feel that that's kind of where the category has gone. Carbs, intra-workouts infused and post-workout has almost gone away completely. You don't get those loaded, you know, 50 grams of protein with EAAs and all that stuff. Yeah. You kind of got this intra-workout supplement that, or peri-workout as some call it with a pre-intra post, that kind of seems to be the new carb category. Where they're not just doing yeah, carbs I, by himself now. Yeah, I'm agreeing because for a while there it was the carbs uh, powders themselves were alone, and I remember talking with a lot of consumers, distributors, and retailers, and, and it was kind of like building your own gainer is what some people were yeah. using for, or build your own post work post workout. I mean, and so they're buying single ingredient or or blended carbs, but it was just carbs only, or maybe carbs and a few electrolytes, you know, just you know something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm always, like I said, I like, I'm very curious. I'm, I'm naturally curious. I like to understand how things work in the body. Uh, that's why I went to university. I was also asked to leave university. Uh, that's a whole other story for another Next podcast. <laughs> Next, oh yeah, it's a good story by the way. Anyways, um, but, but yeah, we've, we've gone through the post-workout uh, formula really hard. Like I, I was custom building a post-workout product for the for the nhl team the vancouver canucks back in the day and we're sending it off and getting it drug tested as well so we did that and when i was manufacturing uh, uh muscle farm products and the original uh owner of uh, muscle farm brad Pia, he, he came up with the idea uh for recon yeah and recon. That was the, yeah and, that, and, and so i was there at the formulation stage with him micro tweaking it to the final stages so you know we could launch it and I remember that was a hell of a formula, and then mutant. We had rehab, mutant rehab. Ah, that was I, the that was was that the joint support had like joint. It, yeah, yeah, I remember that one. I mean, that was a, dude, that was a big ass servant. <laughs> dude, 
<laughs> we had 18,000 milligrams of free form amino acids in that thing. I, I mean, this. this was before the EAA trend came along. Yeah. We were just blitzing the people with this stuff. Oh, yeah, we had four grams of creatine, four grams of, of other stuff. things in there. It was, it was good. Oh, yeah. I, I'd put I'd put mutant rehab up against anything for, for post-workout See, it's, it's that kind of approach that I feel like, and you saying that you remember me, that has to that has to feel like a good fit for PVL, especially after the 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 dominate. It just, I mean, if it, if you ain't working on that, like you said, you're working on something. Well, we're just going to call it PVL carb feel good by by Shane. Yeah, yeah. you know, we're going to get yeah, feel good, and we're just going to call it that now. Just put the feel yeah. good in small, and then the Shane in big, and it'll just be cool. all right. Yeah, PVL Shane. <laughs> I mean, we'll be like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> cool, cool, cool. No, we're, we de we definitely got something that we are working on. I can't really disclose what it is. Yeah. And by, and, and by the way, by the way, this you is why did I don't not ask. Guess, no, no, but by the way, you did not guess exactly what it is. So, was I close though? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but you gave me some great ideas, and that's why you and I like to chat because we're, we're good for each other. Shit, so I'm not close. <laughs> Ah, you're kind of close, but not exactly. You, you'll find out. Don't worry. You'll find yeah, out. And you, me, and you, and you won't be thinking. disappointed. I, um, yeah, like I said, I, li I like the, the PVL approach. And it's very obvious that you're sports, nutrition-based, and performance-based. And you see that with the athletes that it sponsors and the teams it backs. And so I think it's a the dominate approach, whereas the high, like I said, the high stim has its market. And then you get the yeah. markets that are in between that have good performance and high stim. And then you get performance-centric, and it, it's, I think PVL is, you know, you know, your audience, like you said, you, you went around, totally. you asked your market, so you wouldn't put out anything that doesn't fit. And I think people will be pleased with dominate. Um, again, especially in the Canadian market, it's, it's people, it is very different to the American one. I, I have to stress that. And, uh, but we also, we also jacked it up with a lot of neuro. Don't forget too. Like yes, again, yeah, yeah, the mental side, like a lot. Well, yeah. And again, you know, one, one person's uh, definition of high stem or high neuro is di different than another's, but... Lion's mane's in there, right? If I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and, yeah. So we, and we put in the extract version. We just didn't put in the powder. Yeah. So we, we, you want to, we always want to emphasize that. And we put in a good amount of the Hooper Zine. I've always liked the Hooper Zine. Um, and for some people who might not think it works, I have a little tale to tell you with. So everybody, you know, Cuddle up to the fire here and tell you a little story now. <laughs> so we had we, one of the brands that we third party uh, manufacture uh, their their uh, brand for them, and uh, and I won't name them because of course uh, the, the owner would not like this story to get out. But it was <laughs> it was an R and D thing. So he sent me his formula on, on paper, and he just said Hooper Zine A, and I think it was something like uh, you know five milligrams. And we're like, okay. And we're very technically savvy in our lab, of course. And so my lab sees, oh, five milligrams of, of Hooperzine A. So the Hooperzine A ingredient is a 1% potency ingredient. Yes, yeah. Okay. So the way <laughs> my lab read his instructions was to put in <laughs> five milligrams of the Hooperzine A itself, I know which meant there was 500 milligrams of the ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> nobody can take 500 milligrams of this ingredient and that's what was in the lab sample uh, my, my buddy who owns this other brand he comes in he's a big dude he's 280 pounder and uh we're, we're all in the lab and for whatever reason i wasn't doing the taste testing that day but he and my poor lab manager uh, they went a little wacky there for about an hour or two and and then, and well, what the hell happened? well, yeah, like, and, and, and yeah, my, my, my lab manager, she had to leave, uh, she had to lay down and after, after getting zipped up with this high neuro and then having, too I much heard it was too much can get, uh, like dizzy brain fog kind of effect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Too high. yeah. So, and there's also limits on it in, in Europe. Like you, you can't use too much of it, that there are limitations on it. And as, as well there should be anyway i guess my uber point to the, the silly story was yeah it, it works, works. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it 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 can put some big people on their bums 
And, if, you, if you can have too much of it and it, and it, it yeah it's it obviously works it has some effect uh yeah, yeah I've, it's quite common these days i think in pre-workouts almost a lot more than it was a couple of years ago at least yeah so we got the dual action caffeine in there so we use the caffeine anhydrous like everybody uh, but we also add in the caffeine citrate which is legit you know it's a u.s pharmacopoeia ingredient it's not some bullshit made up caffeine that doesn't exist uh, and then we, we smoothed out the, you know, uh, we like to say, you know, it's all smash and no crash. So we smoothed it out by, by adding the L-theanine. So the L-theanine isn't really uh, a mental stimulant in it, but it's also not a downer. Uh, it just tends to smooth out the effect and extend the effect of caffeine so that you can crash through things yeah. um, and, and, and not come down too hard. So between the lion's mane, the huperzine, the two caffeines, the L-theanine, and then, of course, with every pre-workout that we make here, uh, we we added in the full uh, medicinal dose of the BioParent, uh, that patented absorption agent. Yeah. So again, from a formulator standpoint and a consumer standpoint, um, I won't buy anything as in, in a pre-workout or or in a high-end amino uh, formula. Like if you look at all of our mutant products, all of our mutant products in, in the amino category and pre-workout category. They're all fortified with five milligrams of bioparin when you take the full daily dose. I think it's a, a lot of brands have, have really come on strong with that. Like if it's not that, it's estrogen. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's 10 milligrams. I've seen uh, yeah. some people just do the black pepper by itself. They don't do the, the branded one. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been a fan of it for over 20 years and, and, and I feel it. It works. It's great. Plus, we, we got you know some inside scoop. Uh, from the doctors behind uh, Sabinsa. And that's the raw material uh, brand that owns uh, the BioParin. And so we got data from them from Baylor University and they were showing us the uh, the blood levels on the BCAs that you can get with the BioParin. And they nobody knew about that study. You know, So we're the kind of brand that goes around and asks, again, there's that curiosity yeah, thing. Yeah. So we're, we're asking these questions. And, and so I asked the, doc, uh, the doctor at Sabinsa, I said, well, what do you think if we added the bioparin to our BCA formulas? And that conversation was over 10 years ago. And he says, well, Jim, that's a hell of an idea. Here's the Baylor University study we did. I go, no shit. Cool. And so, you know, the, these little things um, are the things I like to brag about that we do. So, you know, you look at our, our pre-workout formulas or our BCA formulas, our EAA formula, they, they all have the bioparent in them. And almost all of them also are fortified with magnesium. Um, you know, magnesium, mind, muscle, mineral is the best way to look at it. Uh, so these are the little things, just like, just like the DE111 yeah. that's in the ISO gold. So virtually every one of our formulas has some extra advantage that we've added to it. And having been around for 25 years, these advantages that we do choose to add to our products. These are ones that actually benefit all of us as athletes. So I'm con I'm making these for myself. I'm making these for me, the consumer. I was about I was about to say you don't you don't last 25 years in the industry if if you're not doing something or you don't know what the fuck you're doing and you obviously know. <laughs> Well, when you have Health Canada, you got the United States FDA, I got AQUIS from Australia, I've got EU certifications, we got certification. Yeah, we got certifications for like over 50 countries and mutant, as you know, is in over a hundred countries thereabouts. So it's like, yeah, I think, I think we're doing okay. You know, you know, you know, I, you're I, doing. I, you know yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Inspector. Oh, Bob, did you have a child last year? Oh yeah. I, I love your family, Bob. Thanks for showing up again, by the way. <laughs> well, uh, it was uh, great having you on and, and uh, well, we're done. Up. Well, yeah, like I said, we gotta, we have to, we have to leave room for the next one because that's when we're talking about mutant. Oh man, there's gonna be a revolt now. You know, everybody's gonna stop tuning into your world famous podcast, and you cut me off. <laughs> uh, look, I got, I got <laughs> I said it an hour. I think we hit the hour. I think it was, it was definitely a great conversation. And as I'm, I'm promising the second episode, and and I think we can get on to mutant, which would be uh, equally as fun. I think so. Uh, and we'll we'll do that next week or the week after. So we'll make sure that that. You know, we'll, we'll make sure it's a full season one season, so we're not going to leave you hanging. So uh, <laughs> we're going to have some fun. Yeah, it was uh, great having you on. Great chatting to you. Yeah, first time in like two years. <laughs> first time in two years. Well, technically, yeah, we, a, we, technically a year if you're forgetting last year. So yeah, we, we uh, won't tell everybody the rest of our conversation from <laughs> Vegas. But we have to keep that under wraps too. 
yeah. Well, uh, that, once again, it was great having you on, and look forward to having you uh, having you back in a couple of weeks. If you if you can handle it, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make a time. Thank you. Shane, thanks again, buddy. And you're a good guy. And thanks for putting up with my uh, odd sense of humor. And no, hopefully, no. hopefully, hopefully everybody great. else put up with it too. Awesome. Thank you.